My name is Mallory. I'm a psychic and medium. Would you call it ability? Like, what do you call what you can do? Is it abilities? Or... I guess gift, abilities. Everybody has different words for it. It's just part of who I am. My goal really truly is to empower people, is to give them the ability to tap inside themselves and know that the answer is there, right? So how important are we? Like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> when people are just so easy to dismiss it. I'm not saying it to believe in it. The question of like, maybe that's possible as opposed to being no way that's possible. It's like, how do you know? Fear. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And, you know, I, I this topic, uh, you know, would you call it ability? Like, what do you call what you can do? Is it abilities? Or... I guess gift, abilities. Everybody has different words for it. I just don't really have a word for it. I'm just... It's just part of who I am, right? Okay, so in, in regards to, let's call it abilities for sure. the, the sake of just calling it something. You know, this topic has come up a bunch of times in my podcast, and I think it's a hot topic in general with people. It's fascinating. It's interesting. You know, I, I believe in this stuff, but I, I think when it comes to connecting with the other side or psychic abilities, it, it gets very diluted with certain people. I'm sure there's some people that are just BSing all of us. Sure. And I, I feel like, what is that difference? How do you tell? And I'm curious from your experience... Uh, but first, start with you know who you are, sure. what you do, and then I'm curious to see what kind of evidential experience have you had personally with what you sure. do. Sure. So, um, well, my name is Mallory. I've really established. Um, I'm a psychic and medium, and um, kind of like the work I do. I think what differentiates me from a lot of other psychic and medium is like I try to go from a really grounded perspective, right? So I'm not into magic. I'm not gonna wear a witch hat. I'm not like it's not who I am. I'm just what you see is pretty much what you get, and um and I'm not interested in magic, right? So it's like I try to bring people back to themselves. Like my goal really truly is to empower people, is to give them the ability to tap inside themselves and know that the answer is there, right? They can connect into the spirit guides. They can, not everybody needs somebody else to do it for them. Like I understand like they'll come to me because they want the answers, but I always try to empower people. Like it's always about the greater good, the higher self mm -hmm. of the person. And um, so, yeah, so this is kind of like what I do. I speak to, you know, souls that have crossed over. I see souls that have not crossed over. Um, I have psychic abilities as well. I usually do everything through like what I call the spirit guides. So, um, and it's funny because the irony of it is like, as I'm speaking, I'm like, oh, even the word that you're saying, like spirit guides and things can seem like really out there. Right. Mm -hmm. But I try to bring it back so that it's tangible. It's, it's, if even someone who maybe does not believe or is skeptical of this world can find something in it. Mm. And I, we get, I don't know, dozens and dozens of DMs and comments per week of people that are like, you know, thank you for your content. You have helped me feel less about the afterlife or thank you for your content. You know, I was grieving so heavily and this has helped me go through this. So mm. As long as I get comments like that, like I'm happy. Right. Yeah. I think that that relies on the the positive aspect of it. I just wonder how many the people that are saying, you know, you've helped them through X, Y, Z, even mm -hmm. if it's someone you haven't worked with. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Because it's ironic when you said that you get what you see, but you're seeing things that we don't see. That's so, correct. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah. So how do you how how does it help people? Obviously, if I see the aspect, if you tell them you're you're seeing a loved one that has crossed over, that's mm -hmm. comforting. But I wonder how many of those people that are in such deep pain want to believe that. So it's more of a, a wanting to believe as to I know this is so. So how do you show people that this is actually so? I don't. Okay. So I mean, it depends. Like if it's um, you talking about my social media or my one on one, Just right? In general, it's, it's I general. The, yeah. I, I don't try to prove anything. Like I I'll tell people what I see and what I hear. And I'm not like I'm not interested in making anybody like a believer of what I see, right? It's not it's not my goal, um, because ultimately at the end of it, it's well. I'll give you an example. Like we get a lot of messages of people that are simply like, "Oh, I had a dream about this," or "I felt this," and I think my grandmother was here, or "Do you think it is true?" And my answer to them is, "It does doesn't matter to you because the truth is, either it's true or not, did it make you feel better? And if it did, then great." Mm. Like, why are you trying to prove something that honestly, like I always tell people, like, when I like, well, prove it. I'm like, I'm not interested. In, <laughs> like, I don't care if you believe me or not. Like, it's just really not the goal. Like, I'm not here to, like, create a cult or, or get you to just, like, see me better than you. Like, it doesn't interest me. Mm. I, I'm speaking of my truth and what I see and what I've experienced. And if something out of it feels right to you, great. If it doesn't, then leave it. 
That's perfect. Like I'm not, I'm not attached to it really. I think that's important in regards to anything, like, especially when it comes to beliefs. No matter what the beliefs are, it just becomes. It does become even in my question inherently, it becomes that defensive one side or the other. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm with you on that. So I love that answer. And like if you don't believe it, it's okay. Then don't partake. Don't pay attention to right. it. And it's whatever. Is it, is it harming you? Right. You know, a lot of the things that I hear and see in the comments when I've had co- similar conversations like this. Uh, I've always hear a response. Oh, that's demonic. That's demonic. Oh my God. And then I, my response is, I was like, that's like the nicest demon I've ever seen in my life because what, I don't understand that aspect of it. Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea. Um, yeah, we get that a lot. Uh, well, actually that's not true. Like not too much. It's only when videos go really viral, then people will come out like, oh, you know, you're talking to demons. But the truth is about, is because people are scared. They're afraid of what they don't understand. Right. And a lot of people that come from a very deeply religious background, which is when people come out at you saying it's demonic, fear sells and fear controls people. And so ultimately, this is what it's about, right? So they're coming from what they've been told and they've been told to to be afraid of what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so then they're coming at, and it's, and so they're coming at you with saying, oh, it's a demon. And I'm like, okay, like if I don't, to me, demons are not even real. Like heaven and hell is not real. It's just things that are invented by men to control men. That's all there is. And so when somebody says something like that, I was just like, okay. Sometimes I just delete and block, honestly. I just don't <laughs> even have like the energy to engage with it because sometimes it's it's pointless, right? Yeah, I don't engage. I try not to engage in the negative stuff. Depending on what they say, sometimes I do it for sport just because it's fun, but in a, in the nicest way possible. Right. But yeah, nevertheless, I think it just goes back to the same thing. It's like if, if it works for someone and truly makes them feel good and pure and the intentions Absolutely. are good on both sides. I think I see the challenge of, you know, the, the Fugazis out there and there are frauds out there, of course. It's, yeah. it's distinguishing those, which I'm sure can be a challenge for people. But then I think that goes in line with what you're saying to them. And that's where I think not the proof is important for proving a point. I think maybe that quote unquote proof or anecdotal evidence or just some kind of feeling is important to, to verify for that person that's looking for the help. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to the world. Okay, but I'll give you an example, right? I always tell people when they come to see me for like one-on-one sessions, um, I always tell people, I'm like, I am not in a business of predictions. If you want me to predict if you're going to have 2.5 kids and get married in two years, you're in the wrong place. Because the truth in the matter is no one really knows, right? I'm about 60 to 70% accurate most of the time. There's things that I'm better at than others. Um, things, information that I receive better than others. Some is just kind of like, sometimes it's foggy, but... You know, I don't pretend to be 100% accurate at all, but also it's like I always tell people, I'm like, to really get something, get the most out of your money when you come see me. Don't come with such a rigid way of thinking, right? Come with a way of like having a question that's more about like the betterment of your soul or like if you're stuck in something, like say I have a couple of paths that I want to explore and which one is better for my soul? And I'll tune into that and I'll give you the details for it. But also knowing that, you know, if you take door B instead of door A that we just discussed, as soon as you leave the door, it always goes out the window. What do you mean goes out the window? We have different paths. Like at every moment of every day, every decision that you make changes your path ultimately, right? And some paths rejoin the one that you were on and some don't. Some take you completely in a different way. But if you and I discuss, you come for a reading and you have, you and I have a discussion and then you have a question and right now it's the best scenario if everything goes according to plan. If you continue on the path that you are on, this is the best scenario. This is what I'm talking about. Like I'll give you steps. I'll tell you where you're going. But ultimately, if like you make another decision, you might step on path B, on door, you know, open door B. And that is not a path that we talked about. And then you're changing that. So this is why it's like you don't get the most out of anything if you're so rigid in the way you want to go. So come with an open mind. Yeah, completely. And it's, it's um, this is why like prediction is impossible. It just uh, for anyone or just in general, like you can't really predict something per se. And it's not helpful to the person either. For exclusive access to bonus content, new episodes and more, check out our Patreon account for only five bucks a month. Link is in the description. What is the biggest reason people come to see you? Is it strictly to see if they can connect with someone that died? Yeah. So there's both, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one is somebody has passed and they're grieving and they would like to contact them. Um, that's a big one. And then the second one, a lot is, um, 
people come in because they're stuck. This is probably one of, if it's not because of a past loved one, it's because they're stuck where they are. Like I feel stuck. It's probably, I get that like every, almost every reading, somebody's like, I just feel stuck. Like I, mean, I don't know where to go. What, how does that, for someone with your abilities, how does that, how does that work when it's not connecting with the other side per se? Like what is that problem? Oh, and then I'll just like, I'll be like, okay, great. Like, and so I, because I communicate with the persons, like my own spirit guides are here and then they will help me understand like what's that person's spirit guides is saying. So I would just tune in and whatever they tell me, I repeat. But also like I would ask a following question. I'd be like, great, you feel stuck. That's wonderful. If you want me to be really detailed about what the issue is, like let's break it down to which aspect of your life you feel stuck. Because otherwise, if you have a general feeling of stuck, your guides are going to give you a general feeling of where to go. Mm. But you want details, ask me the question. And so because spirit, like spirit guides have different abilities, right? Like a I'm sorry. Can you define spirit guides for people that... Yeah. It's, I keep talking about this without describing it. Um, a spirit guide is sort of like a soul that was assigned to you at the beginning of the birth of your soul. And there's more than this, but as a general statement. So it's some, it's a soul that just literally knows you better than you know yourself, right? And so they know what you wanted when you came back into this life. They were part of like the plans that you made. They know some of the major steps that you ask for sure to get and to do. And so they try to guide you, but also you have free will. So sometimes they're like, well, we tried, Mm. you know, you just, they don't listen. You just went this way. So how do they guide people that don't have the ability to listen to them? Like what is, what are usually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and the way everybody always asks me this question, they're like, okay, well, how do I hear my guides? How do I do anything? And the truth is like, even if you don't have the ability, it's all about being in the moment. If you, if you have the ability to not just get so rigid into the outcome of something and just take the steps, Mm -hmm. you'll be guided into the next step from one to the other. It's about being in the moment and then the flow will come and you'll be able to follow that. But if you go, for example, when you wanted to start this podcast, right? It's like, you're like, I'm going to start this podcast. Great. But you were, then you had steps to take, right? But if along the way, when you took a step, the step didn't feel good, maybe you had the ability to be like, okay, well, maybe I'll sidestep a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. That's guidance. Right. So you have, everybody has it without knowing they do. I love that. Yeah, no, I was, when you started saying people come to you stuck, I started thinking selfishly. I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I feel that. I feel like everyone feels that. And part of me is like, is that stuck or am I just being impatient? <laughs> like, right, well, there's you know, both, yeah. yeah so but no, they come for me for, uh, for stuckness. And then what I, to go back to what we we're saying, so what I'll do is like, I'll be like, okay, because literally it's almost like, you know, there's different strengths. Like, it's like you might be good at writing, but you might not be good at math, right? And so it's like, I would not come to you if I have a math I- issue, but I might come to you if I have an English problem, like I, and I'm trying to write an essay, right? And so the same with spirit guides, they have a different set of skills. And so when somebody's like, well, it's, it's for my job, like I, I don't like my job and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, then I'll tune into this and then I'll be able to give them guidance to try to step out of where they are at. Mm. Or maybe it's not, maybe it's like, stay where you are, like, and then you can do something on the side just for fun, right? So there's a bunch of different reasons why, but I feel it's more powerful than just giving people, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Because it's easy to just get locked into that and then just get stuck if it doesn't come true right away. Interesting. You know, it made me, it, I was curious, I, sure. I'm coming out of line right now, but I'm curious about in line with the discussion of not mattering what's real or what's not because it's what it feels right with you. Mm-hmm. What was your process of discovering this in regards to like, wh- what, what the heck happened? <laughs> like, how did, what do you mean? The, how, the first like, time you had an you experience. You see dead people. Yeah, I like, see know, dead people. <laughs> yeah, you just like wake up and know what it is. It's like a process for <laughs> no, you to discover. No, no, no. This. I grew up in that, in that stuff. Um, I grew up in that stuff. <laughs> That'd be funny. Like you get up one day and then there's a ghost right there. What is that? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so... I grew up in that. Um, my my family m- on my mother's side, on my maternal side, is it, they have a lot of gift, like mediumship and psychic gift. My mom is a great medium and psychic. She doesn't tap into it, but she has. She's really gifted. And so I grew up in it. When I was about 12 or 13, like my parents used to have seances in the living room next to my bedroom, which I did not know, by the way, that was happening. And so every night, like it was every Thursday night with a friend of them. Of them and then every time... <laughs> Every time like uh, they would end the session, their friend would leave. And then whatever spirit they had called, which was the same one every week, will come to my room. And 
the first time it happened, I wasn't sure what was happening. And I kind of like was freaking out. And then finally I realized like, if I have a conversation with a, with a guy, like he just goes away and he kept asking me for the same thing. So it just dissolved, like evolved How from that. How old were you that. at that time? I was like about 13 or 14 around that age. And what was the, like the literal process? Was it a voice? Did you feel? Did you see? What, what did you- no. So <laughs> the first time it happened, it's like I was laying in bed and I was trying to go to sleep and I felt my bed move. And I was just like, oh, I was wondering if my mom was coming in to tell me something or whatever. And so I just turned around and I looked and I saw this man standing on the bed, by him, like literally like sitting on my bed. I was like, I freaked out. I grabbed the blanket and I just covered my head. Like, that, that's, it that's was usually, stupid, the right? trick usually works. Dude, it's so, but it kind of does. And so I just waited. I held my breath and then it just like went away. And then I was like, okay, maybe I'd imagine this, right? And so, and it was about every other week that it did it. And then it happened again and again. And to the point that I started being like, okay, well, this is not going away. Either I'm going crazy or there's something about it. So one day I sat up and actually was like, what do you want? Mm. And then. It's the same person every time. Same, same exact um, spirit. And so I heard, um, I'm looking for my son. But this was like. It was a really old soul. It was a soul that was literally like wearing clothes that looked like medieval. So it was ancient. And um, what I didn't know, first of all, like I wasn't aware of what my parents were doing. Like I'm now I know it was a seance, but at the time I had no idea. I didn't find out until like I was in my 30s, like late 30s, actually. I'm in my 50s now. I didn't know. And I was talking to my mom about it. She was like, oh, yeah, we used to do the seances in the living room. I'm like, are you shitting me? I'm like, really? And so I told her what I saw and we described, we compared notes and it was exactly the spirit they were calling. I was just like, quite out loud. <laughs> oh, they, tried, they weren't happy with, in that room and they came to you to see if you had better luck? No, the, because it's like, if you are going to do something as stupid as doing a seance, please do not do that. Like, close this, like release the soul. Like, don't, because like, they thought like, oh, we're done. Great, now we go to sleep. But that soul is like, well, I'm here. So the seance, I feel like, usually has a negative connotation to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just the stigma of, I don't know, maybe it's just semantics. But True. what is it a negative thing to do? Like, I don't recommend doing it, no. And you're just calling spirits, that's essentially what it is? Like, well, because you- the thing is, like, my mother is very gifted, right? And so whoever came through... And then they continue to have conversation with him. Like she could actually kind of know that she was not specifically being messed around with. Um, but people like, what is it called? Hujai board? Huji board? Ouija board. Ouija board. I can, I can never pronounce it properly. That's the French in me. I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it. But anyway, the Ouija board, right? It's like you are basically calling upon any soul that's walking around or just might be like, hey, a bunch of dumb teenagers, let's mess with them, right? So it's it's... Not going to be grandma that comes through. It could be anything that you have no control or idea over. And it's not going to hurt you, but it will freak you out. What's that about? What are those, those, say those, those souls that are just open, catching into whatever open door there is. What are those souls doing? Why are they latching on? What, what does that mean? No, it's, they were just bored. Did we get bored over there? No, no, no. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it is what it is. No, 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 not at all. So you had um, Haley, right? Haley, whatever her name, that, that just the nurse, the hospice nurse. Oh, a uh, hospice nurse, Hadley. Oh, Hadley. I'm so yeah, sorry. Hadley. Yeah. Yes. You had her, right? So yeah, she's she, yeah. She's so she's really lovely. And so her thing, like she talks about how, you know, like people see the dead loved ones before they pass and the whole thing. Right. So there's a thing that happens once a soul when a body dies, right? When somebody dies, the soul lifts out of the body. When the soul lifts out of the body, it doesn't cross over right away. And crossing over means simply like to walk into another dimension, walk into the light and go into the other side, which is the afterlife, right? And so the souls will often, most souls hang out for like four to six weeks after death. You know, they just kind of like want to see what's going on or if they, it was a very abrupt like a death, they will, maybe they have unfinished business. They want to make sure they say goodbye to everyone. Some souls like to see who's going to be at the funeral because who would not, right? Mm, And then eventually they pass. Now what happened is during that period of time when a soul is earthbound, this is what I call an earthbound soul. I don't call them ghosts because again, there's so much like bullshit out there. Like when a soul is earthbound, it's still very locked into earth frequencies, like into human frequencies, right? So it's the closest that it would be to be able to communicate and interact with the human world. Mm. And so this is why, like, if somebody passed, 
I mean, I know your father passed, right? And you might have been very young, you might not remember, but usually people will say that I swear to God, I felt them. I felt them in the room with them. I know they were there. And it's because they are. They are for a short period of time. And then eventually, that connection they have with Earth's frequencies or human frequencies fades. And so their ability to like hug you or be there with you fades away. And then they have two choices. They can either choose to stay, which is not good, or they can choose to cross over. And when a soul crosses over, the way they show up is very different. But when a soul chooses to stay, then at that point in time, they can just, it's kind of like it's not good, really. They can just wander around or to be able to still interact with the human world. The only way to do this is to feed themselves of kind of like earth frequencies, right? And so this is why they love emotions. They, lo they love crowds because there's a lot of emotion in it. And emotion is a lot of frequencies. And so it just makes them stronger. Do I have any correlation with seances because there's usually multiple people involved? Right. So no, so seances, the way uh, they are, it's not specifically that. It's like, so imagine, imagine you pass on and you're like, I'm not crossing over. I don't want to go to the other side. I would like to stick around because I love earth, right? So you just here and then you've been around for a long time and then you have gotten some strength, you know, because of whatever. And then you just, it's like almost like you want, you think of something you are, like you go, you want to go somewhere you can be, right? And so everything, like you hear everything. So if you're just like roaming around and you hear a bunch of stupid teenagers doing something and you just been there, it's going to be attractive. It's mm. like, well, it's not like you don't have time. So so if, if people can stay, if souls can stay here and then some people cross over, mm -hmm. have you had a glimpse? Is it all these things you've seen or things you've learned from spirit guides or people that are souls and whatnot? Like, have you seen yeah. what's on the other side and what both. really happens deep in there? Yeah, both. So what is that? Okay. So, <laughs> um, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, well, this is a... <laughs> Let's prepare ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep me on track here. Yeah. No, so here's what happened, right? So there's the souls that don't cross over and stay and stay here, which is not good. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the longer you stay, your main character trait will become worse. And so, for example, I'll give you a very good example. Um, we helped a friend of mine one time just drive her car. Like we had to take her car, drive it from where we were to San Diego. And it, was, it used to be her husband's car. And then we got to her house. I had never met her husband before. We got to her house and we took the car and we started driving it away. And suddenly I turn around and I see the husband sitting in the back seat. And I'm like, oh shit, he hasn't crossed over. And the whole time we were driving, he kept telling us how to drive the fucking car. Like telling us like, the radio, this is how you turn it on. And I was just like, would you just please stop it? <laughs> <laughs> just cut it out. Leave us alone. Her deceased husband is in the back of the car telling you how to operate the car. Correct. And so, turned out to be, he was just a men's planner the whole time when he was alive. So it just, you know, it just implant, like gets a little worse. Yeah, that's funny. And then eventually he just disappeared. And, and I don't know, like I'm not interested in crossing people over that don't want to be crossed over. That's not my job. But so, they just kind of like, they they remain the same. There's no, there's no, if, evolution of the soul. If the soul doesn't cross over, it doesn't get a chance to. Mm -hmm. Now, when a soul crosses over, it just literally, it just cross over and then gets to, it's almost like another dimension, right? It gets to another dimension. And when you get there, the first thing that happens is you will be met by your spirit guides, like by the energy that have been guiding you your whole life. Mm -hmm. And once you get to that, the first thing they will show you is kind of like a, a life review of your life right? And you get to see your life review based on everybody's perspective. And so how people felt in your presence, how you felt, the di and then you are like shown like different options that could have happened, things that could have changed. But not as like you did bad, none of that. It's just simply like as a, um, like a just like, let's just look what happened, right? There's really no judgment whatsoever. Then once that happened, after that, you go into some, a space that's called a healing room, it's like a healing space. And that place I have seen. And it's, I mean, I'm, I want to live for another 60 years. But nonetheless, I'm like, bring it on. Because it's like, it looks like this place where it looks like a, just crystals everywhere and bright, bright light. And you just have like translucent souls of beings just walking around. And it's like, imagine laying down on a bed of crystals and feeling like energy coming from under. 
mm. an energy coming from above. And then you are just feeling your whole body buzzing with healing and it's removing like anything that you've just been hanging on to. And so it's clearing your soul from what you just left. Mm. And then once you do that, and I, some souls stay in there forever and some is very quick, right? And after that happens, then you go into the space that's called the afterlife. It's almost like another dimension. Um, there are souls that I have seen and I've spoken to who told me that they were not able to heal all at once. And so they were taken in and out of that space. And then what it, there's a space that's called, I kind of call it the, um, like a, you've ever been to a spa where they stick you in a quiet room? in between sessions, like you go to, like you get a massage mm -hmm. and maybe you'll get something else. And so they put you in this space that's called the quiet room. Why do you wait for people to come get you? That's kind of like what it sounds like, right? Your soul just hangs out until like they go, okay, a little more healing. And then eventually you go, all right, you're good to go. You are free. To the next dimension. To go to, then you go into the afterlife. And when you are in your afterlife, whatever you want, here you are. Nice. It's whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to experience, you can. And so often when I get souls that come that are from, you know, that are in this piece of their life, of, of their afterlife, which is usually most souls than souls that come through, they can look the way they were when they were 20, but they died when they were like 90, right? Because you can look however you want. And I've had souls that stand there and they keep changing clothes. Like they just, it's whatever you want. So are you experiencing earthly things there? Yeah, sort of. It's it's a little bit different. And people always ask me, they're like, oh, is there smells? Is there music? And we're just like, I have heard people laugh. I have heard soul have music. Communicating with people or souls? Or they're communicating between each other. Yeah, it's like... Um, so I'm like, what do you do over there? I mean, it's funny when you said, I was so interested when you said they're like bored souls. So I'm like, if you do something for long enough, you're going to get bored. I'm like, that's eternity. Right. So you can't think of this. So there's like the, the, the souls that have crossover versus the earthbound souls is really different. Totally Earth, different. Well, earthbound souls, they're still bound to earth, right? And so, and they don't interact with each other. I've never seen earthbound souls interact with each other. Somebody's welcome to prove me wrong. Like I haven't seen every single one of them, right? And they're just like, imagine being stuck somewhere when no one can hear you. Oh. Correct. That's terrifying. Right? And so... You have a choice. You can eventually cross over, or if you don't, you just get worse and worse and worse and worse. So what what is reincarnation come or not come in? Well, so that's the next step. So let's say you're in your afterlife and you want to experience a thousand different things and you do that for as long as your soul feels good, as long as it wants to. And if some of your loved ones, maybe that you have learned that you knew in this life that are part of like your soul family or not, like you want to interact with them, you can. Some people stay together, some don't. But eventually you're like, okay, well, I've done it. I've been there. Like I've experienced what I wanted to experience. I just need like, I, I need something different. I'm, I'm ready. And so there's, you will step into another dimension, right? And so that dimension, it's another piece of the afterlife basically. And so every time you incarnate into a human body, you leave a little piece of your soul behind. It's called the higher self. And it's also part of your intuition. And the higher self is a piece of you that remembers everything about everything. So every single life that you've ever had, your higher self knows and remembers. Every single person you've ever loved or every soul you've ever loved, your higher self remembers and knows. And so once you go into that second piece of it or third, like that other dimension, you realize with the higher self, you get everything back. Every single memory we've ever had. You remember everything and everyone. And so then you get to reunite with your soul family. And it's kind of like a big party. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, look at the adventures I've been on. And so uh, say, say my father, for example, yeah. is it, do I see what I want to see? Say I, say I had my Dad's part of my soul family. We've done all this shit together for uh -huh. however many years, uh -huh. centuries or whatnot. Like he's my dad in this life, but if he was someone else in another life, what do I see? That piece, I think I, I don't know specifically. And I'll tell you why. Because the once a soul has reunited with a higher self, I don't see it. Like they'll... That's if, like another... Because if they come, they are very distant. And so in readings, they usually don't show up. Because they just... They remember it all, right? 
And so I don't know in what form they see people, but I think like souls just look very translucent, right? So maybe they just see each other in form of energies. I don't know. Um, all I've been told is that you are reunited with them. Now, the beauty about it, the beauty about it is, so let's say you and your dad are soul family, right? Which you likely are actually. So let's say you and your dad are soul family. You, your higher self is still up there because every single one of our higher self is there is the piece that knows, remembers everything, right? So your higher self is there, has all the memories, but it's helping you and giving you intuition in this life because it was there when you made the decision to come back. But if your dad has passed and he has, let's say he's passed over his afterlife and he has reunited with his higher self, you're already with him. Because my higher self is there. Correct. I wish I could feel that. You can. How would you, how would you recommend that? Just talk to your higher self. So not my dad. I mean, you can talk to him too. It's interesting. You say talk to your higher self. I, I was saying, you ever do, you ever heard of a sensory deprivation tank? Yes. So I did that yesterday for the first time in a while. And it was great for me because it's like you're just stuck with your thoughts. And I, I had some methods in there. And then I had a weird moment where I was thinking about what I have going on in my life and then thinking about my future self. And I literally had a conversation with myself in there saying, I got to talk to my future disappointed self because I was kind of like, <laughs> look at me now and you're disappointed about where you are there, but look at me now. So it's like me talking to that person. It's amazing. And it just related to me talking to a higher self, but it's like, I don't even know what that higher self is. So I don't even know what the what conversation would even spark. Is that, is that even... Well, how did that conversation feel to you? The future disappointed one? <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> future dif- disappointed David was fine. It just, I, I was like, I, my point of saying that was I'm thinking about where I am now in certain aspects, even with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Say we're talking about numbers. And I'm like, oh, I didn't get this, I didn't get that. But I'm like, first it started with past David. I'm like, dude, you, you were happy when you got 100 views and now you get ten uh, 5,000 views and you're like disappointed. But so future David's at like 25,000 views just for argument's sake to make it Damn. quantifiable. And he's discontented with that. And I'm like, look at me now. Look at like this David. So I was talking to the future David, like chill the fuck out. <laughs> you're good. So just don't forget me while you're mm-hmm. over there. So now it's like, you're talking about talking to the higher self. What does that mean for me? Like, how, what does that even do? Well, your higher self is, um, it's also the intuition. That's what I thought. I, I correlated that with intuition. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's what I always tell people. I'm like, if it's fear, it's not intuition. If it's fear, it's not your higher self. Right. Like there's no fear in intuition because if it's fear, like the disappointed David, it's not, it's your brain. Right. Right. Yeah. I I wasn't, I know it wasn't fear. It was just like the day to day feeling of some dissatisfaction. I think we feel as humans sometimes we wanted to get somewhere and you're not there yet. And I was relating it to that. So it wasn't fear. It was just prepping my future self to like chill out. It's all good. Where you are right now is where you're supposed to be type thing. And zoom out sometimes to see where you're going as opposed to like rushing to get to a certain place. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. Because I I always think it's like, I mean, I have moments like that too, right? And I always like really tune in and I always hear but like just chill out. Exactly. Because we're pacing things, right? I always hear my guys be like, we're just pacing things because if right now you get to where you want to be, you don't have the infrastructure to support it. So just one step at a time, right? Yeah, literally one step at a time. That's really the the way of viewing it. Yeah. Has there been any experiences for you either personally or with anyone that has been the most profound? I'm sure I'm not trying to label certain experiences in a hierarchy sense, but whether with another client or your own spirit guides, is there anything profound regarding messages from the other side that you feel are most relatable to the earthly realm and how we're living our lives? Yeah, I mean, I guess I can tell you an experience um, that I had probably about, I want to say it's about 15 years ago. Um, You know, this is when I, I mean, I've always known, as you said, like I've always known there was something like higher and bigger, right? Because I've been in it my whole life, but I didn't really tap into anything or really use it for my own personal life until you know, about 10, 15 years ago. And then professionally, like, because of my wife who pushed me towards it, um, I've been doing it for about three years and speaking to the world because it was like, what's the point of having this gift if I'm not going to, like, use it for something good, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I had an experience which was absolutely amazing. Um, Early morning. And, you know, like those moments where you are in between um, awake and kind of like you're not really sleeping, but you're not really awake. Mm -hmm. You're sort of like this in between. There's no thoughts. You're just laying there. Um, I had an astral projection. Astral projection. Yeah. Out of body? Yeah. It's like like your soul lifts out of the body. I mean, you still attach. You always attach until you die, basically. But 
And I felt myself lifting, lifting, lifting. And I just like let it be, right? So I just kept lifting. And before you know it, I kept looking up, up, up. And I kept climbing as up. And suddenly I found myself in probably what is like, I felt like the cosmos, but it was just like pitch black. But at the same time, there were stars everywhere. It was those little points of lights everywhere. And I was just floating. And I remember hearing it, exactly nothing, like the sound of silence. You've been in a deprivation tank. You went yesterday. You know, there's a sound to silence. Mm-hmm. It's nothing, but it's more than just nothing. When it's, it, I can't even explain it. That's what it felt like. The sound of silence. And it was the most incredibly peaceful. And I was just like, that is awesome. I never want to come back down. Like, please keep me here. I could tell like all those lights were souls. And I felt home. I felt like I was at home. And then suddenly... What happened, and this is like going to sound, well, everything I say anyway sounds a little crazy. So let's just go with it. <laughs> it's a truth, man. It's, a tru- <laughs> it's like it's my truth. Again, nobody has to believe me. It's, it's okay. I love it. <laughs> so I looked up and this, I woke myself up. I started dropping back when I said, suddenly out of the blue, I said, oh, hi, God. And then I started dropping. And I kept being like, no, no, no. And I kept trying to look up to go back up because I was like, I don't want to come back. And I just kept like dropping, dropping. And I, and I just like got back into my, my body and then I was back. What does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? Like when you said, why would you start going down when you said, hi, God? Because I'm not supposed to be there. And it's not my moment. Do you believe in God? Not in religious God, no. But you believe in, uh, is there a source? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there is one person kind of thing just. Yes, yeah, not a person. It's energy. It's energy. It's, energy, right, energy. it's an energy. I'm with that. So is there is this like, you think there is one specific source of energy that is everything or runs everything, quote unquote? Yeah, kind of, right? It's like, um, this is my idea of, of people ask me all the time. And I was just like, think of it as source, like a really large energy, ever expanding, like the energy of the Big Bang. Mm-hmm that ever expands. And out of there, we are created by just like little pieces of filament from that energy. That's all there is. That's all we are. And then they found their way into humans. And then here we are. So how important are we? Like, we're not. <laughs> you say we're not? <laughs> no, we're not that important. I know, I know. We so really are not. What get at. <laughs> it's just like, we're really not. On, and also, I wish that it's not, we're not the only one in a flipping like universe. There's so many different like, Hey, what do you know about that? But what do you mean? <laughs> what's going on? Is there like other shit? Like what's obviously? Okay, okay. So okay. back up. You're gonna ask me about alien, and let's not. Not it's alien. Not, okay, good. Okay. Can be alien. I don't know. You tell me. No, no, no. It's just like you. The idea and that we are the only living beings on the entire solar system and all the other solar system is so typical of a human mind. Yes, that's why I kind of was like, are we that important as we think we we're are? not? There's like. There are versions of Earth on other solar systems, very likely, that are either more involved or less involved, where we look a little bit the same and maybe not, but also many other different planets where beings are way more evolved than us. And they don't look like us, but they don't, like, telepathically, they communicate telepathically and not through, like, talking. Oh, man. Yeah, I saw I saw a post there. I didn't fact check it or, like, research it, but there was some headline that came out that they discovered some kind of star or something in space that was five – I'm pretty sure it was 500. It was – the number was huge, whether I'm wrong with this number. It was, like, billion times uh, more bright or hotter than the sun mm. or something like that. And assuming that's true or relatively accurate – when I see information like that, just my my immediate thought is besides to say, holy shit, it's also just like, and people think the afterlife is a crazy idea. Right, Some people think that other life forms are crazy. If they just, if that's, say that's scientifically proven that they just discovered a sun that's 500 billion, Wait. I really need to fact check this right now. It was a massive number, guys, regardless. You look it up. <laughs> that, I'm like, that, we're confirming that exists, but the idea that maybe there's an afterlife to people is like, yeah, it's bullshit. No fucking way. I'm not asking you, that's why it's not me trying to make anyone believe anything. No. I'm just more, I get more frustrated, not even frustrated, that's the wrong word. I think about more when people are just so easy to dismiss it. I'm not saying it to believe in it, but it just like, doesn't, like the question of like maybe that's possible as opposed to being no way that's possible. It's like, how do you know? Fear. Yes. We're because all little shits. Oh, totally. All because it's fear. Because if they believe in it and it's not true, right? Versus like if they don't believe in anything, then if it's true, great. But if it's not, they were right. 
Mm. So is that fear and ego? Yeah. Oh, I'm 100%. not calling anyone out for like not, but like believe whatever you want. No, it's believe, fine. Yeah. I get honestly, but it's just like I get a lot of people that come at me this way, and they're like, "Oh no, it's just like one life, and then you're dead." I'm like, "Great. Is that helpful for your life to believe this? If it is, you go right ahead." Right. Like, I don't care. And that's that's just important with what you're doing. Is it's not about you know you're not here to show proof to anyone. It's it's whether mm. it makes whether it helps the person, whether it makes you feel good truly. Mm. And uh, it's not a demon, guys. Maybe it's not a demon. So relax with the demon comments. I know, totally. And demons don't exist. Well, that's see, believe that. Which one would not believe in that? That's a good belief, anyway. Even in- demons don't exist. This this is not Hollywood. Even if we are filming in LA. So if, <laughs> so if, let's say if I think there's demons in a sense of evil people on Earth that you could say that that guy's a demon. Maybe not a demon by definition. But what is the what's the deal with that? Like if there's no demons over there, why are there seemingly demonic people? on earth, AKA this evil ass people. I mean, that's like the, the question of good and evil, right? It's yeah, really a big question. And it's a, it's a large question that, um, I get that question all the time in my comments in my DM and I don't answer it. Mm. And I want to tell you why is because when I give the answer, like often it's just, it's, it's too much. There's too many little details that go with it that people always take it the wrong way. Yeah, I've heard some of those. I don't take it the wrong way. I think it makes sense. But depending on your answer. right. Well, my answer to it is like, first of all, I'm gonna tell you that people always tell me what happened to souls that are evil that have done evil stuff in this world and why than this. And I was just like, same thing that happens to your soul. And people are like, what? This person was horrible, and you mean like the same thing as me? And I was just like, it's not for us to judge. So. The thing is, uh, energy cannot be dissolved, right? You can't, you can't, you can pull it apart, but you can't kill energy. You can't like destroy it. And so, if you believe the soul is energy, and you believe that we lift out of the body, and let's say that all the stuff I've told you of the af- about the afterlife, let's go under those premises that this is the truth. Then, once you get to the other side, you have to believe that those souls are going to get the exact same treatment. Now, the difference is. If a soul has gone too dark, right? Like it has, basically it cannot be rehabilitated. Then at that point, it'll be pulled apart. Whoa, what? That's new. Yeah. Wait, so if, if you get, so if you do get too dark here or just in general, the soul. You, you, I mean, I you see, the thing is like, this is the tricky part about it. Part. Wait, what? You have to dive into that part. Back up for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here, go. Okay, let me drink some water. Yeah, drink, this is like, water too, with that shit. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain it. We don't know what people do what they do. We don't. I I don't know. Like before you incarnate into this body, you make choices. There's two ways you reincarnate, right? One is you're like, well, I've been within this family line, this DNA and on, on earth here for generations. And I was like in that in that family like 15 generations ago. And now I want to come back. This is what I do. I stick with them. Great. You come back. Or you could be like, all right. I want to pick this family because they can give me the opportunity that I'm looking soul for. Family. So not specifically soul family, just in general, like okay. your soul would choose to come back and be like, okay, well, I am choosing to come back and choose this family where, because the, where they are located, what they can provide for me is going to give me the opportunity that my soul wants and what it wants to experience. So I'm going to choose them. Right. And then sometime it could be like, well, if you choose them, there's a chance that the body and the soul are not going to get along. And so, like, mm-hmm. are you still choosing this? You're like, I'll take the chance, right? And so you get here, and some people are just, like, mentally not well, right? And then so what happens, there's two ways this happens. If, you, if, if somebody is really not mentally not well and going to do something evil, it doesn't always have to be with the soul. Because sometimes what happens when the soul loses complete control... It just goes, some, it will go dormant. Mm. And this is why you see people that are like, it's like there's no one behind the eyes. It's like they're soulless, right? It's because the soul has been like, well, this was a nice ride. I can't leave because the body's still alive. I'm going to just like shut down. And then when this is done, then we'll try this again, right? So why would that soul be punished? If it didn't participate. So where does the soul get pulled apart? What happened? With- so here you go. But sometimes the soul does participate. And when it does, it all depends on many different factors. But if it's in cahoot with what it's done, and when it gets to the other side and it can't get clean 
I can't get cleansed from all the shit it's done. The healing room's not working. The healing room is not working. Well, I know that was tossed on the other side of the toilet. Ah, <laughs> if it's not, but because they can't let you reunite with your higher self because you would taint it. But doesn't the healing room, all those crystals and shit, then it doesn't just fix everything? Apparently it does not. But you know, but it's not common. Like, so people are always like, oh yeah, well, what a, it's, it's just not, it's, I have no idea what the criterias are. I don't know. Like, I don't know what those are. But have you seen this? I have been. So when I tune in, when I, when I tune into my spirit guides, I just channel things, right? And, I, and I'm literally seeing, and it's almost like, um, it's the same thing as intuition, right? I say there's no fear in intuition. Like it's just, you feel it deeply within your own body. Right. That's how I feel things. Like I'll feel it, I'll hear it, and I'll see it. I'll see a vision of it. And it will settle into me. And I and I know it for it to be true. To knowing us. It's like this incredibly knowingness that I can't explain. And I'm like, I would literally like put my hand on on and be like, like, I this this is this is my truth. This is what I've seen. Put your hand on it? Or? Not my hand, but like, you know, like put my hand in fire. Like uh, I don't okay. know what the expression no, I, is. I know what you're it's the French expression. <laughs> it's the French in me. What is it? Oh, God, no, don't talk about that. <laughs> what are you talking about? Let's talk about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want to bring religion into this. This is like, a, this is this, this is my nemesis. Let's keep it general. Or if you want to talk about it, whatever. Tell the mic. No, it's just like, well, I mean, that brings it back to demons, right? You were asking me about demons? Yeah, I don't really care, to be honest. But That's good, but yeah, we don't have to talk about this. That because it's like, people will always... When they don't understand something or it doesn't fit their view of something, they will have to call it another way. Yeah, I feel like I understand nothing, but I don't really like at the same time just kind of opened. I don't know. That's like, the best way to do it. Like, eh, eh, eh. Even though sometimes I feel like I force things too much. Do, do, you, sh do you like hit a switch and it's like, y'all leave me alone? Or is it they, just, they come through annoying you? No, they don't come through annoying me. I'm, I'm fairly blocked all the time. On purpose? Be on purpose, yeah. yeah Unless I decide not to be. Like if I go, we travel to Europe a lot. You flip your hair to the left and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> I should do that. It's like, ding, ding. <laughs> no, <laughs> that'd be funny. That'd be awesome. No, but it's like we go to Europe a lot, right? And Europe is filled with like soul fragments and like some earthbound souls. And so I'll tune in because it's fun for content, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't do that very often. And when I go to Disneyland, it's kind of fun. But otherwise, like on my daily life now, otherwise it would be so Exhausting. Oh man, imagine turning it on in Disneyland. That'd be a war that'd be a trip. I do all the time. What's going on? Is Mickey Mouse next to like Mickey Mouse's father? That would be funny. No, there's like <laughs> there's just like different, you know, I mean, happiest place on earth, right? I'm gonna I don't know. Like, you that. Do it like that. It's like so it's I, I've I've seen spirits there, like there's one all the time that I see all the time and he's perfectly happy where is he is. Walt? I no, no, I have no idea who that is. It's the, around that era, but I don't think it's him. Everybody's like, it's Walt. And I was just like, I don't know. The guy's not giving me his name. I have no idea. Okay, well, it's just, I feel we could talk for like nine more hours. I'm going to have to take another LA trip at some point. But one thing I, I did wanted to ask you in regards to what you said earlier as it relates to my dad. You mentioned sure. uh, how their souls may be more active sooner after the event happens for a few weeks. So in my case, when it came to my dad passing in 2001 – Whatever, 23 years ago, is it, it's harder for me or for even someone like you to have, to have that conversation, even just for my sake, you or me, just in general, is it harder to have those conversations because it's been so long? No, or not really. It depends. What was your dad's name? David. David. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Pretty original. Sure. It's not because it depends on where he's at, mm. right? It depends on where he's at. So, yeah. Um. If he has crossover, which very likely he has. I mean, what and, else has he been doing for 23 years? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's true. But it's like, you know, sometimes people, when they pass in like circumstances like this, like if they have families and things, you know, it's just like there's this need to just feel like people are going to be okay. And so are, would you say spirit guides, as you described them, that's more, that's more active in your earthly life? That's more... Uh, what do you mean? Like, for instance, like my dad may have moved on, quote unquote, but my spirit guys, that's more like day to day actively in your life. Yeah, I mean, those you can't get rid of even if you want to. And what are mythologies that, and it kind of, I asked it earlier, but you said it's not so much about trying to tap in with them, it's just live your life and those little left turn, right turns yeah. are kind of part of them playing a role. Yeah, yeah. So it's not so much trying to get a Dolores Cannon kind of understanding of what they're saying. To no, you. I mean, you can, like, I, I, it's not necessary. You, it's, it, you can, but it's not necessary. But a lot of people like want to understand better. They want names. And I'm just like, okay, well, just whatever name you want. Like those are not beings that just 
we're alive on this earth, so it doesn't matter, right? It's just like, call them whatever you want. They'll answer, and if you, you'll know. But it's being grounded and being able to, because if you're very grounded, you can hear better, like just tune in more. And when you say grounded, do you have any methods of getting grounded? Yeah, I mean, like, and Mary lives in LA, like go to the beach, mm. walk outside, go to Griffith Park, right? It's just like, Nature. Nature is really good. Also, just kind of like tuning into like a an energy above your head and dropping it down to your tailbone, right? It's very and just moving back and forth is very helpful. Like being being really into your body. That's how you hear better. Because otherwise, then you're working from a from like you know the the chest up to the head, and that's your brain. So even if you're imagining this energy, it doesn't matter what color you're seeing. Just just literally just imagine. And that imagining of that is good good enough in itself? Yeah, it's, it's what it is because it has, I always tell people, I was like, how does it make you feel, right? It's like, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel good? Like, do you get answers that make sense to you? And then the more in tune you are, the more guided, it's about stepping out of the way, right? Because it's like, if you try to control everything, there's no room for guidance in any ways. And so step out of the way and then just kind of like just go with the flow. Yeah, I literally made a post today kind of about that. It's just kind of like riding the current of life and Latin to surrender in many ways, even though that sometimes becomes a convoluted word. But I I feel like that's something I'm still working on is that kind of just letting things, letting certain things go and letting it take me. I don't yeah. know if that's in correlation to what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Because yeah. then, then you're more likely to just step into the path that you so really wanted. Yeah, and that's, that's the funny part is like, I, I'm letting that happen. I'm like, and then you still have those little voices in your head and maybe you're correlating with the, the fear and like, the, don't listen to that. But it's those thoughts like, I'm I'm on the, that's like what I'm talking about. I'm like, I'm on the right path. Does he even know? But I'm like, am I on the right path? Those are the conversations I have with myself, not even just my dad. And I guess, go, I think maybe it's starting to question certain things, even though I know, but then you have those little voices in your head that just make it, it's just noise. But then like, is it noise or is that? my intuition, you know what I mean? It's like deciphering the two sometimes just gets multi-layered, but then it's probably my own brain just going way beyond where I need to go. Yeah. Do you talk to your dad often? I try to, yeah. I mean, I, his birthday was on the 11th and I was ha- and I, ha- I was having those conversations and I found, I came to like a conclusion, even though it wasn't, we're having a beer and having a conversation. But yeah, I, I talk to him. Uh, I think it's just... It's more me just talking to him. Yeah, I'm not getting much back. I'm not expecting that either. I'm not expecting him to be like tap me on the back. I'm like, hey man, how you doing? But you know, <laughs> I, I I do I do I have these photos everywhere, like you know, in my bedroom in here. Yeah, so I when see I, him. Especially, yeah. especially when I see him, I'll you know I'll, I'll say some words to him. It makes me feel good. So at the end of the day, it just goes back. I feel good about it. That's enough for me. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? He worked in the in the towers yeah. in the 911. Yeah, 911. Yeah. Was he not supposed to go to work that day? Not that I'm aware of. I don't know. That's something my mom kept kept from me. Sure. Um, no, I don't, I don't remember that information. Sure. I don't think so. She might have kept it from me. Who knows? Mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, she would have told you. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, no, then again, I don't know. I know my mom, if that was, if I say hypothetically, if that was true, to protect us and not even have that over our head, she definitely, she would have kept it all these years. Yeah. I was a pride out of her. But no, I don't know. I haven't heard that information. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard legacy to live with. A little bit. You know, but everyone's got their shit. Yeah, it doesn't mean yours is not important. Right? No, no, no. I'm not diminishing mine either. If anything, it's just like, you know, we all got things regardless of what it is. And sometimes the hardest thing you've ever gone through is the hardest thing you've ever gone to. So it's like, I don't know, what is this hierarchy of... Because sh- I see someone, you see, you just talk to someone in general that has on paper, it's like, holy shit, that is, that's intense and it is. But then it goes back to like diminishing your own. So it's just, I don't know, we're all just going through this life stuff and just handling it as we go. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, because I know we have to wrap it up. Um, when souls come through that have crossed over, right? When they, they, they come through, it's specifically when they've been gone for a while and everything. It's like the best readings, the best thing that I've ever experienced is when people allow the fact that the emotions that are going to come through are always incredibly loving and always like very caring. And some of the things I hear all the time is like how proud they are and how like excited they are for like their lives and the family and they're so happy they're still there and doing well. Um, and people always get surprised when somebody shows up and like, I don't even get along with them. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the people that show up, sometimes you can have known them for five minutes and you made a difference in their life. 
Mm. Right. And so this is why never dismiss what you do for somebody else because you don't know how important and impactful that can be, even if you don't even remember them. I had this guy one time that showed up. He was, he died when he was 18. He ended his own life, but he died when he was 18 and he babysat my client for like a summer when she was five. And she literally like didn't remember it. And we were like toward the end of the reading. And then she goes, oh my God, I know who that is. I was just like, oh God, thank God, who is that? <laughs> and so we entered into this whole conversation and she mattered so much. And the reason why I'm getting at that is because um, your dad had me done 23 years. Like hopefully, you know, like he has gone through some stuff, but I can guarantee you like the messages are very much like the, the pride. Like you took his death and made something out of it. Like you, you took your pain and then just turning into something that's helpful for people. Mm. And so that is something that you're very proud of. Oh, I appreciate that. For sure. I hope so. Otherwise, what the hell am I doing this for that? I'm just kidding. He is. <laughs> he is. Mm. He is, for sure. Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, of course. Of so, course. Well, this is, again, these conversations fascinate me so much. And to, I appreciate you allowing us to step into your mind a little bit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, um, yeah, I mean, you're welcome. <laughs> Is there anything you want to get off your chest before we tap out of here? Anything you haven't said that you want to say? No, I'm good. This was wonderful. Um, this was a lot of fun. So absolutely, I'll come back if you are and that people want to hear more. There's so much more. There's that. always so much more. That's why I think if, depending on how you feel about me after this, we'll talk off the mic so you're not to publicly humiliate me. But no, I think, no. Uh, if, I like you. Yeah, okay, I appreciate it. <laughs> I I'm like sure you. we'll do something again, if not the podcast and or the podcast. Maybe we'll, I, I'm sure my people that are listening, my people, you know, my people, we're all people. Hi, people. Yeah, people. <laughs> that are listening might have some questions and uh, absolutely maybe we'll figure something out to get some of those answered we'll do a live event or something like that but we'll we'll figure it out but uh that'd be great i'll put some links in the in the show notes as usual if you want to find her but if you want to drop any information to yeah you. yeah that'd be great actually um if anybody is interested in my work or anything like that i it's hard to get to see me for a reading because i book super fast mm -hmm. right so but if you're wanting to um i book so basically we release every every quarter so right now, my next release is May 1st for like July, for um, appointments for July, August, and September. Mm. And our appointments go like in 20 minutes. So I advertise it on Instagram through my broadcast channel. I'll say release at this time, get on my mailing list, and then they go very quickly. But also I do like masterclasses and workshops and things, but I have meditation, guided meditations on my website that you can download. So, you know, if it's something that people want to sort of like me guide them through going in and doing a past life regression or things like that. It's sort of fun. Oh, you do that? I do. I mean, I don't regress people. Like I do a guided meditation. In my readings, I don't regress people. I, I only, I'm only shown lives that matter to the person right now. Interesting. I'm fascinated with that. Because I just read my first past life regression book. It was uh, Many Lives, Many Masters, which is a popular Yes. I'm curious what you think about that. We'll talk about it off the mic. But um, that was just, fa it just fascinating. I was like, I wonder if that's something I should be considering. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing and then we'll leave it at that. It's like when people... If people go into a past life regression, if you choose to go to a hypnotherapy, like I don't do that, but go with questions about your own life because it's there to help you understand your life better. If you just go because you're like, I just want to find out who I am, you're going to be disappointed because guess what? Most of us were not anything important <laughs> in, in past life. We just were not. Like, it's not like we were like, you know, Shakespeare or something. Like, we were not. Yeah, that I want to know is like, who the person that was Shakespeare? What's he, What's that soul doing? I have no idea. Yeah. Like, I don't know, yeah, man. Yeah. But no, so <laughs> go with questions because it'll help you understand the details of your life. So, so questions about your current life and see if that relates to whatever happened in the past. Right. Because yeah. you might have something that you have a phobia or something and you've tried to figure that shit out to where right. it came from and you can't. It might lie something in the past. And that's how it's helpful. Got it. So. All right. Well, well, we'll leave it on a cliffhanger with that. Now, I really thank you for doing You're this. very welcome. And uh, another episode of Dead Talks. If you have any questions, don't bother me. No, I'm just kidding. Just message me. <laughs> All right. Later, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Dead Talks. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That'll give you updates as to when we post a new video, more episodes, and more content in general. We are streaming on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and all that. And also find us on Instagram at Dead Talks Podcast or www.deadtalks.net. Thank you so much.